Good morning. Welcome to digital worship here at Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Luca Taliano. As the weeks and the months have piled up, maybe you are going through a lot of aggravation right now. You might be aggravated at someone you're living with, someone you're working with, maybe someone you've seen in the news. How do you deal with it? Today we start a two-week series on how to deal with aggravation, and it's my prayer that this is a blessing to you, that not only do you grow in Jesus, but that growth in knowing Jesus results in practical things in your life as well. Now, we are going to begin worship by singing a song called, This Is My Will. It's a song based on the words of Jesus the night before he died, where he says, I want you to love one another. So, go ahead, click on the eye up in the corner, a panel will open up, and go ahead, click on that first song, This Is My Will. Let's worship God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible tells us that we are to love one another. The Bible also says that in our anger we should not sin. And yet so often in our aggravation we do sin, don't we? When we're aggravated, we're not usually aggravated because we love the person we're aggravated with. Uh, or at least we're not showing love at that moment. We're not living out love. Often enough, we blow up in anger or we're passive aggressive. Again, we're, we're failing to show love. God says there's consequences for that. That when we are not loving, we are sinning. And the soul who sins is the one who dies. And yet, God showed love to us. What I'd like to do now is give you a moment to confess your sins to God. To admit the times that you have been aggravated, that you have allowed that aggravation to run your life. The times that you have failed to show love to those around you. I'll give you just a few moments in silent confession. God had every right to be angry with us, but God also loves us. And you get to see both the love and the anger of God on the cross, because there you see how angry God is, angry enough to sentence us to hell. And you see how much he loves us, that he chose to take that sentence on himself instead. When Jesus died on the cross, he took away all the anger of God for all the times that in your aggravation you have sinned, and for every sin you've ever committed. Jesus died for you, and you are forgiven. And so, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you poured out your anger on Jesus, and you've given us your pleasure and love, and for that we thank and praise you. Be with us today now. Bless our worship. Grow us in love for you and for one another, and unite us to each other. We pray all this in your name. Amen. All right. Come on down. We're going to go down here and uh, have a children's devotion now. We'll see you in a sec. Thanks for joining me down here. Uh, it took a sec to get down here, right? <laughs> I want to show you something. This is my laptop. And I've had this for a few years, and maybe you can tell on the back here that it's breaking. I've got some cords that are loose. The hinge is missing. It is falling apart. Now, I own that laptop. I paid for it with my own money. So whose job is it to fix it? Mine. I got to go to a repair place and get them to fix it, and I need to pay for them to fix it. Because it is my laptop, so it's my job to fix it. Who owns you? That might be kind of a weird question, but did you know that Jesus paid to own you? Yeah, he didn't pay with you, for you with any kind of money. It's not like he took out his wallet. He didn't have a credit card. He didn't have a PayPal to pay for you. He paid for you with his blood. 
He says, I want you in my family. I want you with me. And so he has you now, which means if you're broken, it's his job to fix you. If your body is broken in some way, Jesus will actually fix you. On the last day, he's going to put your soul back in your body and everything will be perfect and your body will be fixed. If there's something wrong with your heart, the way your emotions work, or something wrong with your mind, Jesus says he's going to fix that. But there's something a lot more important that's broken. And that's our souls. You see, anytime we sin, our souls are broken. In fact, we sin because our souls are broken. But Jesus said, I love you anyways, and I'm going to fix that. And that's what Jesus did. He came down from heaven to fix you so that your soul is healed. And in fact, it is now. Your soul, from the moment that Jesus died for you and then he created faith in your heart, for many of you at baptism, Jesus said, now your soul is repaired. It is refreshed. You belong to me now. And that's pretty cool. So when you feel broken, I want you to remember that it's Jesus' job to fix you, and he already fixed your soul. That's pretty cool. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for purchasing us with your blood. Thank you for dying for us and for repairing our souls by forgiving us and making us your own. When we feel broken, remind us that we belong to you. In your name, amen. All right, thanks for joining me down here. We're going to go right back up here, and we are going to join together and, uh, and listen to some of God's word now. Hear now the word of God from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. This is God's word. We're going to continue now with our song of the day. It's a song called Forgiven. It's a song that reminds us that we are forgiven despite our sins, despite the many things that we may have done while we were aggravated. We are forgiven. So go ahead, click on the eye up there. The panel will open. Go to the second song, Forgiven. And let's praise our God. Grace and mercy and peace are yours. You already have them because Jesus has given them to you. Amen. Can I make a little confession to you? I am really hoping this quarantine ends really soon because if not, my kids might wind up dead. No, I love my kids and I, and I know kids you're watching this. I, I love you dearly, but you really know how to get under my skin. Any of the rest of you have this issue that, that you're suffering a lot of aggravation right now? now? Maybe it's not from your kids. Maybe it's from your coworkers or your bosses. Maybe there's something where you work that is really, really aggravating right now. Maybe it's someone else you live with. Maybe it's a spouse or a parent that's getting under your skin and you are just done with it. How do you handle that? How do you handle aggravation? Do you blow up at people? Do you go passive aggressive? Do you throw up your hands and say, well, fine, whatever. Those things aren't really helpful, are they? They can damage relationships. They can cause guilt uh, on both sides. It doesn't 
help. So what do you do? How do you handle aggravation? Well, this week we're going to focus on self. We're going to focus on what do we do with ourselves. Uh, a wise man once said, I'm starting with a man in the mirror. So we're going to start here. And next week we'll talk about how do you deal with the person who's aggravating you. But we're going to start with ourselves. What do we do with ourselves when we're aggravated? And to do that, we're going to look at the guy, a guy by the name of Paul. Now, Paul wrote about half the New Testament. He was a big guru in a lot of things that God taught. He went around founding churches all over the ancient world. And one of the places he had founded a church was in the city of Corinth. Paul had spent a lot of time there. He really loved the people there dearly. Um, and after he had got them going that they could stand independent, there were pastors there to take care of them, Paul left to go found a, another congregation. Well, about a year and a half after Paul founded the city, the, the congregation of Corinth, some people came to visit him from there. I said, Pastor Paul, we have a lot of issues. Everything is just falling apart. People are, are shouting and arguing at each other all the time, and they're, they're nitpicking at each other, and there's some big problems. I mean, people are taking each other to court. They're suing each other. There's a lot of sexual misconduct. Um, the, the, the people are getting drunk at communion. What do we do? And can you imagine how aggravated Paul could get there? Can you imagine how much he could, he could just vent his anger at people and going, you, you knuckleheads, what are you doing? I gave you Jesus, I told you what that looks like. Why are you acting like you're acting that way? Paul wrote a letter. And he was going to go visit them, he's going to see them in person, but he knew a letter would get there faster. So he wrote them a letter. And this is how he starts. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes. He's not yelling at them. He's not screaming at them. He's not venting his anger. Paul starts by remembering who he is. He was called by the will of God. See, Paul remembers very distinctly that he didn't want to be a follower of God. In fact, earlier in his life, Paul had hunted down Christians, had jailed them. He wanted to eradicate Christianity. He thought that it was a plague. And then God called Paul. Jesus came to Paul and said, Paul, you're going to follow me. Now that, that is amazing. And Paul realizes who he is. In fact, in another portion of the Bible, Paul writes that he is the chief of sinners. He was the worst sinner, and God rescued him. So Paul begins by remembering who he is. Paul is a forgiven sinner. And then he moves on, and he says, now I'm going to remember who you are. Paul writes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. He says, I'm writing to you. You have been sanctified. Now, sanctified is a big, fancy word. It means made holy. It means that we were not holy, and now God looks at us and says, I have taken away all your impurity. You are forgiven. That's pretty cool. And then he says, you were sanctified, you were made holy, and now you are called to be holy. That once you're sanctified, you just go, don't sit around like a lump going, blah, I'm holy, blah, blah, blah. No, no, that's not what we do. Now, now we live that out. We've been made holy, so now we live holy lives. We've been made pure, so now we live pure lives. And you notice where Paul started with them? He says, to the church of God. Not my church. Not your church. This is God's church. He purchased and won you with his blood. Not with gold or silver, but with his blood. He purchased you. 
You belong to him. And then Paul finishes this up by going, and not just to you, but, but to everyone everywhere. See, we are all in this together. When we are Christians, we walk together with every other Christian. That's pretty amazing. So Paul began by remembering who he was, a forgiven sinner. And then he remembered who he was talking to, forgiven sinners. And then Paul says, and this is what we have in common. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we have in common. Grace. God should have wiped us out because of our sins, but instead he gave us salvation. Peace. God had every right to be aggravated with us because of all of our sins. But instead we have peace with God. And now God is our Father. He's adopted both of us, you and me, into his family. We have this in common. We are forgiven sinners. And you know what Paul does next? Then he says, I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Paul doesn't call them knuckleheads. He doesn't get down to business to start fixing things. He says, oh man, I am thankful that God has given you grace. I'm so thankful that he's forgiven you. And Paul isn't doing this in some sort of passive, aggressive way going, well, you're acting like forgiven children of God, aren't you? No, that's not what's going on here. He says, I am so thankful. Because I remember who I am, I remember who you are, and I remember what we have in common. Now, Paul does not leave it there. The whole rest of the book of 1 Corinthians, he starts addressing all of these issues. And he starts going, look, this is not how a forgiven child of God acts. God has saved you. Now, this is how that looks in your life. And you notice it isn't matching up with what you're doing. This has to change. But he starts... By remembering who he is, a forgiven sinner. He continues by remembering who he's talking to, forgiven sinners. And he continues by remembering what they have in common. They are forgiven sinners. If you are going through a lot of aggravation right now, this is what you need. You start by remembering who you are. You are a forgiven sinner. Now, this is not so easy to actually remember because your sinful nature is really clever. Your sinful nature will constantly go, well, yeah, of course I'm a sinner, but I'm not that bad. You know, at least I don't do that. But let's be honest here. God calls you to live a holy life. But let me phrase this a different way. What aggravates you? I bet you every single thing that aggravates you could boil down to this. Something got between you and something you wanted. You wanted to have a good day and then the kids. You just wanted to get to work and then your boss. You wanted to spend some time in front of the TV and then your parents. They get between you and what you want. What does God want? God wants a world that is very good. God wants a people that give him glory in all they do and live in joy that he gives them. And what do we give God? Sin. We get between God and what he wants, and he has every right to be aggravated with us. Now, when I'm aggravated with someone and I let it show, they know I'm angry with them, and often enough I try to punish them in some way. I, I, I take something away. At the very least, I take away my pleasure from them, right? Right? Well, if God's aggravated with us, it's not just a matter of an hour in timeout. It'd be a long time in timeout. It's not just a matter of timeout. We have earned hell. I have earned hell. I am that bad. But what has God done? Instead of being aggravated with you, he was aggravated with Jesus. He stirred up all the wrath and all the fury and all the rage, all the aggravation, almost like it was in a cup. And then when Jesus was on the cross, the Father poured out all of that cup on Jesus. Jesus took the punishment in your place. And now you are forgiven. There's no anger left. There's no aggravation left. 
you are forgiven. And that includes for all the times that you've been aggravated, for all the times that you have not shown love. You are forgiven. In fact, you're not just forgiven. The Bible says that now God delights in you. He looks at you and says, I, I'm so happy with you. So the next time you're aggravated, start here. Remember who you are. You are a forgiven sinner. And know that person that's aggravating you? You know who they are? They're forgiven sinners. That doesn't mean that what they're doing right now is perfect, and we're going to talk about that next week. But start by remembering who, what their identity is. Their identity is not screw up. Their identity is not someone who's in my way. Their identity is forgiven sinner. The same as your identity. And then, remember what you have in common. You are both forgiven sinners. God has shown you both grace. You both have the same father. And when you remember that, your aggravation will lessen and you can actually deal with it in a God-pleasing way. Now, this is really, really not easy. I started the sermon by saying I am struggling with this. So I understand this isn't easy. I'm going to read to you something from Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. You catch that? The fruit of the Spirit is love. It's showing love to the person who's aggravating you. The fruit of the Spirit is patience. Being patient with the person who's aggravating you. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness and gentleness. Being gentle with the person who's aggravating you. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control, so I don't lose it when someone is aggravating me. Does that sound attractive to you? How do you get that? Well, it's fruit. It's fruit of the Spirit. And the way you get fruit of the Spirit is by laying down roots in Jesus. By growing in that truth more and more that I am a forgiven sinner. By seeing more and more what Jesus has done for you. In other words, if you want less aggravation, you need more Jesus. You need to be in God's word, seeing again and again and more and more how forgiven you are and how amazing you are. How amazing that is that you are forgiven and how delighted God is in you, not because of you, but because of what Jesus has done. And then you'll start seeing that person who's aggravating you in the same way. Go, wow, this is a forgiven sinner. Again, next week we'll talk more on that. But for now, start here. Start with yourself and deal with how you are dealing with aggravation. Remember who you are. You are a forgiven sinner. Remember who they are. They are a forgiven sinner. Remember what you have in common. You're forgiven sinners. And grow in Jesus so that you can grow that fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have every right to be angry with us, and yet you chose to forgive us instead. For that, we thank and praise you. For those who feel guilty now over what they have said, especially over the, these last few months, guide and comfort them. Move not just to, to sorrow over sin, but change lives as well. Move us to ask for the forgiveness of those around us that we have hurt, and move them in love to forgive us. Lord, we thank you so much for the love you have given us. We don't deserve it. Grow us in grace. Grow our roots deep into you so that we can grow in the fruit of the Spirit, so that can, we can rejoice as we grow closer and closer to you. Be with those who are leaders and give them wisdom. Give wisdom to all who are dealing with the pandemic now so that they can show love to those around them. Lord, hear our private prayers. Now, 
Fill our mouths with praise and our hearts with joy as we see your love. We pray all this in your name. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our God has given us such forgiveness that we need to praise him. And so we're going to continue with the praise song called, Behold Our God. It's an anthem that I think you'll catch on with pretty quickly, even though we've never sung it here before. Go ahead, click on the eye, the pen will open up, and we'll sing that third song, Behold Our God. Let's worship our God. Thank you so much for joining us here at Amazing Grace for Digital Worship. If this was a blessing to you, click like, Click share, click subscribe. That really does help get the word out to other people and share the good news that Jesus has died for them too. It's something that we have in common, right? We are forgiven sinners. Now, if you are a member at Amazing Grace or a regular visitor here, uh, a survey went out this past week uh, talking about how to get back together again once things are open. Um, if you have not done that yet and you are a member or a regular visitor here, please do complete that survey. If you didn't receive that survey and you want to take it, please just let me know. Uh, that will really help us in our plan to figure out how to best serve you with God's word. All right, that's all I got for this week. Thank you again for joining us. The Lord be with you till we meet again.